So, Baba, you hear of Peter will be interviewed yesterday now. When he say uh, government, they plan to arrest him because in Senate government they steal oil for Nigeria. Baba, the man they write. I'll show you some things now. I did on board a unanimous vessel. I'm not gonna like to mention name. This ship where they see so now VLCC. As you can see, I'm a very large cargo carrier. Look out. You see the size of the ship. You can see the size. This ship where they see carry one million barrels, minimum. At least one at least, at least give and take minimum one million barrels of crude oil. Now there is something called there's something called the AIS. We have other, all these things, now they take track vessel. All these things, all these things. Every Navy of every country in the world get these things. All these things, the moment a vessel enter your territorial water, this thing goes here. The moment any vessel, even from, from like 1,000 miles in, from, your, from your port, they go down see say they come. All these things, they take and they track vessels. You see all those green, green things here? Now vessels, the way they come the place where they then still they far. But this thing don't catch them, say then they come. Now, all these things, all these things, right? all these things, now things where they track vessels. This particular one now, right? this one, is called GPS, Global Positioning System. Then the other one I first show now, this one is called, this one are the AIS, Automatic Identification System. Now there is, you see all these things eh? There is another one where they call Long Range Identification Tracker, LRIT. -L now there is no way, way ship, ship of this magnitude, ship of this size, go enter Nigeria, load crude oil, sail out without being noticed. And they tell us that nobody know when they come, nobody know when they go. You understand me? Already the moment any ship just they approach your territorial water, the navy from the control room go down see them. You understand? But to say navy no no, navy no know when ship come go, nobody know when ship come go, custom no know when ship come go, abba, abba. But then tell those tell those things to the dust now. You can how can you be talking to people as if say we we, we be we be as if say we did daft, as if say we be fool. So when Peter will be saying our government they steal oil, nobody. Now, according to Vanguard, in the clinical analysis, the Labour Party candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, gave a jarring account of Nigeria's dare economic um, strait that triggered grave concern. He said that out of all the OPEC countries, only Nigeria was not meeting its supply quota, while other countries were angling for more, except Venezuela, due to sanctions. Now, the Labour Party candidate... Um, summarized that using an average exchange rate of 550 naira, this amounted to in excess of one trillion loss in the month of July alone. He revealed that 1.6 trillion was Nigeria's um, January to April income, while it incurred a four trillion expenditure, resulting in an over three trillion deficit. Now, Peter Obi declared that. This was not oil bunkery, but official stealing, not just by ship in territorial waters. The question we're asking today is, is the Nigerian government, right, stealing from herself? That's a question. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow. All right, so I saw the post when this video was first released online, where they said that NMPC had revealed an illegal connection line from one of its major oil export terminals in the sea that had been operating undetected for nine years. This is supposed to be a four-kilometer pipeline, right, which typically exports around 250,000 barrels per day of oil. And, you know, so you saw the video. The video connection from Extravot Terminal, distant from the four for Cardo's deep sea illegal connection referenced in that particular story. That was the first story that broke around this oil theft. So I kept saying to myself, because I saw how they were taking off the mud from the pipeline with shovels and all of that, because the NMPC guys, they've been there and all of that. And they've been visiting, wearing their rain boot and looking for, you know, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> like Rambo. <laughs> you know, somebody said that. <laughs> are they, what's that explorer's name that they, they're yeah, looking for, you know? <laughs> so in my head, right, I think that was what birthed this question, right? Is it possible? Because, I mean, it was Sanya, but I love that his quote that says that if something lasts beyond 24 hours, if in, in insurgency lasts, the government's hand in it, is in it. Yes. So how can we, and that's why we had to bring this video. So for people that do not even understand when they say that there's oil theft, right? Oil theft does not just happen with kegs. It doesn't happen that I, I steal crude oil and I put it in this cup and I'm going and hide it. It's not conspicuous. People don't see it. These are like structured theft that happens that they are moving this crude oil in big vessels. So how on earth, right, would it not sound... <laughs> <laughs> Would it not sound ridiculous for you to tell me that the government is unaware that these things are happening? You know. So let me hear your thoughts, Chinelo, then I'll come to you, Mary. Stealing on oil is not for the uninitiated. Mm. It's not for the daily delivered. So I don't understand why you wake up and tell me that there's a pipeline of four kilometers mm. and you're not aware. Okay, so what happened to us? Nine years. Mm. Not one year, not, like you rightly said, crude oil is not something you carry a bucket with to fetch from a well and then you move on. It's not possible. We, what, we just saw the video, right? And then, you know, he said when the vessels are moving, they have um, AIS, of the automatic course. identification systems. So how do you tell me that a vessel that large picks up, what, one point something million barrels of oil and is moving and nobody is aware, hmm. farm, we're not stupid. Okay. Mary. <laughs> mm. I think... Maybe we don't understand. People are probably striking deals, yeah? And so it is organized theft. It's not area boys that are going. These are cabals that are coming together, still from the inside, to say, okay, you know what, let's strike our own deal, you know, run one pipeline, whatever. Yes, there's no way that you won't tell me that the government is totally unaware. Hmm. So when they want to bring up news, say, okay, guys, how far is your own story leak? Yeah. And then that's what comes out. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, there's no way. Same goes for either customs or... NDLEA. NDLEA. Even the NDLEA that they are boasting, say, hmm. is somebody that is snitching. So maybe... You didn't pay one person well, or you know something goes wrong, they leak your your story out. But as far as I'm concerned, though, is organized theft. Absolutely, and you know um, this man that they just gave the oil pipelines to God. What's his name? Tompolo. Tompolo. He had accused the federal government that they were actually the one, um, the federal government security agencies, or they were aiding crude oil theft. You know, that was his claim. And he said that he had a comprehensive list of those that were involved in this theft, right? If we had a serious government, given that crude was supposed to be, or crude is supposed to be one of the major revenue generator for Nigeria. I mean, I watched a video, Dubai. To the last drop, there's a massive screen the guy was taking one of, I think, the, one of the CNN reporters, I can't remember who went there, I was telling her how from the ground all the way to your car, they monitor every single liter, everything is going. So we are not even, first of all, we're not even refining. The only way we even make revenue is selling this raw crude. And yet you then wake up as a government. Do you even want, how do you expect us to trust or believe the government? And again, this is a long problem because if we have we have say we have even they've done discovery right how do we even begin to solve this problem but let me hear your thoughts Uti when you first saw the video of them uncovering because they were pretending like they were just discovering for the first time so let's agree with them that they are just discovering it for the first time that they didn't know that those pipelines existed but when you saw that what came to your, uh, to your mind well I guess I'm just a very cynical person because I mean first of all we're paying an obscene amount of money. What is it? Four billion, something like that a month, for this uh, security of our said pipelines. 
That one is another problem on his own. Well, yeah, that's why I said let's let's just be clear because you know when we are talking about whether we are stealing from ourselves, it's a moot, to me it's like a moot point. You know, if you are paying to fix a problem that <coughs> you shouldn't be paying to fix, you are already stealing. Before you even get to the crude, you are already stealing. Um, I find it difficult to comprehend how we are not able to protect a limited number, how many, whatever number of kilometers these pipelines are, that our entire security infrastructure in this country is unable, this is not the whole of Nigeria, this is a very small part of Nigeria and the Niger Delta that we are unable to protect. Even without being a specialist, it sounds wrong. So when you then start to justify it, I mean, I find it interesting. You know, to me, this is, like I said, I'm cynical. I feel like all of these stories that are coming out now is simply to justify the fact that this four billion naira is working. Mm. Mm. Because we could ask the question, now, why is it so expensive? And perhaps you don't even need to steal. Let's just pay people off and say they're doing something. And then these stories start to pop out because guess what? You're not there. I'm not there. <laughs> all these magical videos are now Welcome popping yours. out and we're all seeing all these stories. I mean... Like I said, Nigeria just makes you question everything. But the reality for me is all of these claims, all of these, we didn't steal. We're not stealing. There is theft. We need security. We need help. Our Navy, our Army, we're not taking... I mean, all of these stories, I almost want to say, you know what, guys, I'm just here for the popcorn. Can I just honestly, be chewing like, and honestly, watching this honestly, on the go? Because honestly, honestly. when you stop to think about it, <laughs> everybody that I have heard speak on this issue, I am here. I mean, what was it yesterday? It was like we found 42 points. Mm. Along again, a finite number of kilometers of pipeline. And we have found 42 points. Is it that this thing is being done by invisible people and invisible <laughs> vessels and we just go, whoops, look. You know, it's like saying you travel down a road and there's a crack in the road, but nobody noticed until somebody started paying somebody four billion and then all of a sudden, crack one, crack two, all the way to 42. Oh my God. I think... What's it? Don't carry the matter go another. Place. No, now because so, so, I, mean, so I, I, I get, I get you. So you are trying to say that it's possible somebody is trying to justify why they are being paid because we actually questioned it when yeah, the government said they were hiring a <laughs> Tompolo mm -hmm. to um, guard the pipelines yeah. against oil theft. Right? Everybody was questioning why pay so much, you know, because it didn't make any sense. Really, if we had our the guys that work, um, watch the pipelines usually is the Army, the Navy, Navy, Navy guys, right? Yeah. So why do we have those security personnel, the security agencies, and still would hire a glorified... Because thug? now he catches them and hands them over to the over same security. security. So people. there was a story about the Navy destroying a vessel. I mean, again, from an env environmental point of view, how do you destroy a vessel on the water that's carrying crude? But that's a story for a different day. But when you see these things, you are just like, like literally, it's like watching a movie. And you know when you're like, oh the person that wrote this script, come on. Come I on. really had that I thought just that. now. You know what I, mean? I, I feel better. like, you know, a movie should actually be made. And forget it, yeah, these people are so smart. Thinking about it, they are so smart. Because before you think of the next mood, now they've given you motive. Okay, now let's say, Tompolo. This four billion. Ah, but you know we have to defend the four billion. So how we do? Okay, we will find about you know three. We we'll just keep finding. Say ah, we're working. You know, the next one now the story will change. Give it another couple of months. You'll bring out another strategy again. You forget, sweep it under the carpet. Mm. The plan you continues. People are making me a bit worried now. But it's the truth. So though. how do we begin to solve this problem? Ah. Because we cannot continue <laughs> to say that this is the rhetorics and this is a story that we get from Nigerian government. How do we as a people begin to hold them accountable? I remember that a particular government, I won't mention them, just I'm came into power. <laughs> <laughs> I, so the reason I knew about this deal is because I was inside the deal. I was supposed to, we, we <laughs> bidded for the farmland to take, take on that farmland, right? Mm -hmm. And we had done everything. We even gone to the state to go and inspect the farmland. And it was because it, it tied nicely to what we're doing. We are, we are um, what's it called? Um, 
palm farmers, right? We, we, we plant palm, palm oil, I mean, we process palm oil. So it was a palm plantation that the government wanted to sell. Mm. So they had done everything. It was owned by a government, right? They had done everything and they decided, you know what? They didn't want to sell it. They wanted to do a PPP. So we bring in private farmers to come and man the farm. Then we just give them returns. So most of the farmers bidded for the thing and everything. So all of a sudden, it just went quiet. A new government comes into power. The next thing I saw, a massive headline. Different papers, not even one. So they both spent money. <laughs> and they say, XYZ government just acquired new farmland. I say, huh? They didn't even make the mistake to add an extra acre to it. It was the exact same acre, exact same farmland. I'm wondering, like, why? This thing, you already own it. So why are you acquiring something you already owned? So I'm saying to you guys that, so yes, this is happening. Do we then keep quiet as a government to say, okay, well, we're not talking anymore, I mean, as a people, and we say we're not talking, we should just let them be? Because whether we like it or not, this is part of why we do not have development in this country. That's why it will continue to happen, because again, we too were not even trying any way to hold these people accountable. So where do we find a solution in all of this? Because now we cannot just talk all the problem. I will not go find a solution. Eh? I should go for because like. Because I don't know what <laughs> she wants us to tell you. I... How you have been holding the government accountable up until this point? Please tell us. Ah, let's go on a break. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go talk. I'm here to ask you a question, Uti. You are here to answer me. No, I, I, just, I just, you know, rhetorical questions. If you want to ask them, hey, yo. But I mean, how have you... So let me ask my viewers, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's obvious that Nigerians, it seems like the Nigerian government or the government officials or whatever, they keep on stealing from Nigerians, right, our resources and everything. How do we begin to hold our government accountable, right, if you believe that they are stealing from themselves? But if you do not believe that they are stealing from themselves, please explain what it is that you think is happening with the pipelines. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out. I want to say out. It's a very heavy question in my heart. <laughs> right? We're asking, is the Nigerian government stealing from herself? Right? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So... This question is actually a very obvious question that we know the obvious answer. But we'll pretend not to know the answer and get people to just talk. Now, beyond this oil theft, when we talk about government and we talk about the bloated nature of government, don't forget that from the analysis that was read, there are some services, there are some payments you are even making that you're not even earning that money. So that's already putting us on a deficit, according to what Peter Obi had said about three trillion deficit. That is even on one hand. When we even say, okay, yes, we are in a dead situation in a country, shouldn't we see some level of, um, some level of um, piping down in terms of government spending to say, okay, you know what? We are in a critical situation. Let's find a way to, first of all, cut off all our, or block all our loopholes, right? If this has been going on for nine years, what is the government doing? It's beyond just you carrying ring boots and, and touch light and saying you're going to go and shovel. You know, like when I saw the NMPC, I, I said, what is this? It's beyond this. This pipeline links to somewhere. So who are the people that they have named to say, okay, this has been the source or this has been the connection. There's a, there's a, there's a source and there's a, an end point to this pipe. If you're really serious that you, you, you are just trying to pretend like you're discovering this, why are we not seeing people being already arrested to say, you know what, these are the companies that are being, that is plugging to this, um, this place, this pipeline. See plots now. No, but they're arresting people. Why are the people they're arresting, Uti? Can you read the story? No, please read it for me. They've arrested people. They've arrested vessels. They've destroyed vessels. They've arrested people. But why would they destroy vessels? They're arresting people and handing them over to the security. The other day, they destroyed cocaine. Mm. They burnt it. They set it on fire. 
But they are. Oh my Uti, God. you're being sarcastic right no, now. No, <laughs> we all read the stories. Yeah. They are finding these points and they are arresting people. Please open but the is, phone. No, but is that how to find... Oh, I didn't open the phone lines. No. Our phone line is now open, sorry. Please, the number to call is 70 I didn't open the phone line, I'm sorry. I want to hear your thoughts because me, I'm upset. <laughs> Today is not even, I don't even want to talk too much. Just we, tell me. We need to hear this. 0, 7, 0, 2, 5, 0, 0, 7, 7, 4. Now remember, please turn off the volume of your television set when you're calling. Right? So, I get it that they're arresting people. And mm. this thing, they annoy me. Why do you have to burn it? Because now, every single time there is a situation like this, you then hear of fire got in one building mm -hmm. where all the documentation is supposed to be. <laughs> monkey, are we not tired monkey, of all monkey, of these monkey, things? Monkey I'm, I'm just no. upset. You can't just be upset like I'm, that. I'm with you on this. Place, right? <laughs> Let's stay on topic. You've said that <laughs> you are angry that is the government stealing from itself. You have talked about the current situation of crude and oil. And you said you want to know how we should hold the government accountable. accountable. That's the question I'm asking. That's the question. Mm. Who would like to ask? <laughs> there are bodies, right? There's a system. Who are the people in no, the bodies? No, there's OPEC. Nah, we the bodies. <laughs> is it not the know. same OPEC, Nigerians? OPEC is not going to OPEC come out no, you. <laughs> Look, the, the, the reality of it is, I think we just have to admit that you see these games all the time and we always think that things are supposed to happen in favor of the masses mm. but we've seen it time and time again that that is not the way mm. things are mm. happening so if you are talking about the reality today we are losing oil not mm -hmm. only are we losing oil so we're not even meeting our quota, quota yeah. opec is cutting has just cut production yeah um, so, and this is, for all intents and purposes, a major, major source of income as a nation. Whilst we are borrowing, I shouldn't say excessively, but we are borrowing, um, to which this oil is supposed to fund. So, in any standard one plus one makes two situation, right, the government should be fighting two and nail mm. to make sure that not one drop of crude is missing so when that crude is still going missing to the extent that we are finding 42 points again along a limited mm -hmm. length of pipeline then i mean you know how when you watch cartoons there's a dot 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 <laughs> fill in the gaps right with the questions we're asking the things that we're talking about, even if we're talking about just accountability, mm. who are you, when you say, oh, you're holding accountable, let's not even hold accountable from the perspective of fuel. Let's just hold accountable from the perspective of, okay, you are meant to provide security. You are meant to make sure that certain things don't happen. So that you don't even say that we are claiming that where people are stealing, because that was the problem with what Peter B said, right? Mm -hmm. But let's just even talk about the fact that there is just deep-seated failure across board. Mm. If you have a navy, if you have an army, if you have security forces, all these different agencies that we have, and you're not able to protect a small section of the country of an industry, then what are we saying now? Everything else is okay. Is it, is it possible to leave anybody out of this theft? In all honesty, let's be very I think real. I have a small solution. You have a solution? Okay. The, the problem I just have is, even if they want to play these games, eh, at least favor or small. Let's see, that's your let's, problem. Let's, no, but, okay. Why they will not favor, it, it can't favor you. The system is not designed to favor you. It's not. So, so would we, we rather start have to it? appreciate that it's not designed to favor us, we may begin to start to face a possible solution. But when you expect that somebody is thinking of your greater good, that's the problem. Me, I'm, I'm only just saying, at least, let's, let there be small good. If you can even start from there. Because now... The whole thing is a mess. Where do you want to trace it from? Where do you, do you want to take everybody in the government out and put new people? No, because that's the question I'm asking. In this particular incident now that we have seen, do you think anybody's left out? It is impossible. 
for anybody to come to say that their hands are clean. They don't know about it, yeah. Because this is a high level of theft. It's not the kind of stealing that you and I will steal. And that's why somebody has argued that in Nigeria, if you want to steal, steal big. Because if you are stealing small money, you are just, you are just wasting your time. You rot in jail. Right? Because, yes, if you steal big, that way you'll be able to just shut their mouth with big money. That is what we are seeing here. Because if you really want to look at this thing, right, nobody is left out. If this thing is actually true and it's been there for years, it means nobody is left out. There's nobody that will come out and say that, no, my hands are clean. I didn't have any, any part to do with this. And that's why I'm saying that. Are we a joke as a country or what? Are we ready? Are we serious? Do we even understand that we have a problem and are we even ready to solve the problem? So when people are shouting um, aid parties and all of that, these are the real issues. These are the things that affect us because currently this is the only revenue driver that we have as a country. We've not taken other sectors seriously. And if we are seeing this level of decadence that is happening and this level of corruption in this sector, then what then happens in other sectors? I'm upset. Let me calm down. Drink water. So, uh, Mary was trying to find a solution. <laughs> Mary was trying to find a solution, but Uti said the solution is not going to work. But Uti, where do you want us to start from in all of these things? Because if we say that, <coughs> if we say, because where, she's, where she was coming from, where I think I understand her conversation is about, let it even, let, let, let's even find a way to say, okay, have a heart when you are even stealing the stealing. And is that not the conversation where you are yeah, going? Yeah. And you say that we should not expect them to have a heart. Why? If they had a heart, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The conversation would be dead on arrival. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. If you had, it, because that's Today what it I'm is. tired. I'm not talking. It again. would be dead. So again, you don't expect that anybody is going to do anything fantastic for you. Mm. The accountability that we do not have, the accountability in our security services, the accountability in our justice system, all of these people that are being caught now, what's going to happen? Are they going to be let out? Are they going to go back to business as usual? Mm. Let's not forget that the person doing the catching right now was the former leader of MEND. It's like a vicious circle. So, uh, like, when, so when you ask that question, I don't know what the answer is to the solution. I just don't like us to say we have like wishful thinking and we hope and we pray that. Yes, but the reality of it is, is it, are there failures before you even get to the point of, oh, is there, is, is um, what's it called? Are we stealing from ourselves? Hmm. Let's just even hold the people that have just certain jobs accountable. Can we hmm. even start from there? But even that we don't have. Because if we did, we wouldn't be paying no, but the kind of you money see, we're Uti, paying for security. So why we cannot hold the people that have certain jobs accountable is the fact that the people that are supposed to hold you accountable, they are also eating. So as you are the stew, you still see the stew dripping from the person's mouth. So the person cannot hold you accountable. So that is why the person will look away when you are stealing because I am also eating and part of the stealing. I was in a meeting with someone today. She said, see, as soon as she was promoted to this new role, nobody can come. And say they, that uh, this is because her hands are clean. Every transaction she's done, she's in a position to make a lot of money. But every transaction she's done, she's done it so transparently that nobody can say, "Oh, I used to cut the deal with this person." So she's able to face anything squarely. So the reason we are we can't even solve the problem of corruption or this theft that we're seeing in this country is because every one of them, there's nobody that we can point to now that their hands is not deeply involved in this. Is it me, you and I that own a, uh, what's it called, a, a vessel? Or what, what do we own? So every single person across that value chain, they are all guilty, as far as I'm concerned. Let's take comments. Okay. I'll start. The government is not stealing from itself. The people doing the stealing are security men, people in the community, NMPC staffs and the IOCs. For your information, most of the pipelines belong to the oil companies. Example, the one that was just discovered belonged to Shell Oil Company. Another comment says, the stealing has been going on for the past 40 years. It's just, no, it's just now the government is doing something about it. Oh my god. Hi, I'm Stanley. The government is definitely stealing from itself, but in the real sense, of it, the persons, it's the persons in government that are stealing. So they are stealing from themselves. What you saw in Dubai, it is, I think he's trying to say it is now being done 
in Nigeria. Please, well. <laughs> well, well, go ahead, Chinelo. Hey, good evening, ladies. Let me say one thing. You cannot give a rat a fish to keep. The problem of this country is firstly leadership until we get someone that doesn't and we will not have his hands sold in shading deals by these problems. By these, problems will never end. The pipeline that runs from Niger Delta to Kaduna has not been given attention, Seth. These discoveries were only in river states. The army, the navy, civil defense, all of them that work to guard the pipelines know about this, including the top management staff of the oil installations and NNPC itself. Okay, so this is from oh Bobby Kennedy in um, Jalingo in Taraba State. It says it can take up to eighteen hours to load a very large crude carrier with crude oil. The type used to steal Nigerian crude worth seven hundred million dollars monthly, as illustrated herein. The only way this happens is if the federal government. Okay, so cut there. So seventy five billion is enough. Seventy five billion dollars is enough to give us uninterrupted power supply, pay ASU and reorganize our education. Color Nigerians, just get your PVCs. I'm ready. Go and collect your PVCs. We have suffered for too long. Um, good to see you back. Thank you. God bless Oa and others. Thank you so much, Oa B. Kennedy. Long and short story is that. Get your PVC. And you see, it's not just for us to find... I, I don't like that narrative of get your PVC. What I actually want is for us to start asking the right questions, right? Let's not be carried away by the same old kind of campaign theatrics, right? What exactly is the plan? Because if we, I mean, I, there was a particular company that I was privy to, to work in, in, and when a new management came in, the first thing they just did was just, they just blocked off all leakages. They didn't even need to generate fresh anything, any new mm -hmm. customer, anything. Where those loopholes were, all they did was seal off those places you know, and they had enough money, you know, to do things, pay staff and all of that. So that's what we're saying. Nigeria is blessed. Nigeria has a lot of things. But we are just, I don't know how to explain it. We are so, you know, we don't even know how to manage ourselves. If Nigeria were to be your, country, your company, would you run it the way you're running it as a government? Let me just steal my own and go. The thing waiting will go happen after us, no consign me. That's what we see our government doing. Good evening, ladies. I support Uti to discuss another topic. They are cabal societal <laughs> society general. Welcome the PMB giving political honor to over 200 unmerited Nigerians because of the coming election. How about that? That one's a thing. That's another story That's for another day. Thing. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? We need a we need a good leadership and not deceivers. Let us hold on to our PVC. Sister Uti, I missed you a lot. You're welcome. I'm still beautiful as ever. My name is Daniel Ilo. Thank Your ways are you, regular fun. Thank you, Daniel. So I get that argument about PVC, but do you think PVC alone will solve this problem of government stealing from us? Let me hear your thoughts, then we'll wrap up the conversation. I think we all should. So when we ask the question about accountability, I think we should all hold ourselves accountable. One thing that I personally believe that Nigerians are not ready for is accountability. Um, because I gave the example the other day that I live on a street where um, if you leave home beyond 6.30 in the morning, there's a lot of traffic. And I see people, big cars, people that should be educated, people that should know better, mm. forming three lanes, four lanes, and then the little lane that is even left for the oncoming traffic, they still block that lane. Mm. So, you know, it's one thing, it's a little bit hypocritical sometimes when we just focus on what percentage of the general population mm. is the government? Let me take a call. I think I believe I said. Hello? Are you there? Hello? Good evening. Hi, good evening. Thank you for calling. I waited so late to call. Yo, this is the youngest old man. Are we there? Ah, how are you? I'm fine. Long time. Long, long time. Welcome. Your network has not been, uh, it's not been helping issues. So yeah, I we apologize. I hear. Right we apologize. Go ahead. Let me the best way the best way. We have to be counting out for this country. Don't allow the situation to get to you. Be in charge. Oh, be in charge. Yeah, we try. <laughs> what, 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 what we need to understand is that this thing is not stopping anytime soon. I promise you that. You know why? 
the system still rot rotates around those people. Mm. And they know their self. Now I tell you, I don't tell myself, say the money people they spend no normal. And their income is not normal to spend that kind of money. Mm. I know how I earn my money. I know how I get 1,000, 2,000, then count to 30 days in a month. When you see some level of expenditure going on in this country, you know that their money is not normal. Mm. So for, for me, I know that with time, those people, if they don't trade away, if they don't change, they'll trade away. Mm. Because time heals everything. But these guys have gone far. Thank you. If you read the story of that vessel that they caught, you understand that a lot of things are happening in this country. And just the more you look, the less you see. So they know that and get to you. Just calm down. Gradually, the Messiah is coming sooner <laughs> by the grace of God. So Thank you. Down, yeah? Thank you, the youngest old <laughs> man. <laughs> the sad thing is that we even have that luxury of time. <laughs> That's the thing. We keep saying that we have time. We don't have happens? time. <laughs> we keep watching the situation worsen um, over time. And we have to tell ourselves some hard truths. It's going to take, you know, when we hear the exceptional stories that have happened or places where changes happen, um, we remember how bad NAFDAQ was before Dr. Dora took over. So it is possible for change to happen in this country. Yeah. It will take exceptional people, but if we truly want, as we say, if you're, if you're looking on the Twitter streets and you see everything that's yeah. happening now with obedience and all, if we truly want the kind of change that we're, we're talking about, then you and I, we're going to have to knuckle down and we're Absolutely. going to hold ourselves accountable. I think I have another caller. Thank you for calling. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Yes, I'm Peter, calling from Ikodi. Oh, thank you, Peter. Go ahead, please. Yes, I would like to make my contribution. Go ahead. Um, on the topic that we are discussing on, I would like you to go and listen to this uh, SVP presidential candidate about a central bank official during the uh, during the past in one of the past government that was reporting telling the president not to sign the oil subsidy that it was a scam. Mm. At the end of the day the CBN official was that the bottom line is that you don't report the devil to the devil. Mm. Because in the, in the process of exposing some certain people, you don't know the person you are exposing them to, whether it's part of it, and something might happen to one's job or life at the end of the day. It's not that we don't know what is happening in this country. The, but the, process, the issue is that, who are you going to tell? And the person that you are telling, I hope he's not part of them. Hmm. That, that's the issue. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. That's the thing. Who do you report it to? Because the people that... So it is, it is calculated. So it's either you fall into line or you, you know... Because if, if it is a system that have put up a structured way to continue to just steal from the com country, then there's no end in sight as far as I'm concerned. There's no end in sight. And we say that we want to change the country. Let me take um, more comments. Let's see. Let me get, <laughs> as in today, not today. I, I just weak. Okay, so this one says, good evening, ladies. Um, I really feel pity for our nation. When was the pipeline laid? Was it done by spirits? Security agencies pay so much bribe to be posted to man pipelines. Why do you think such happen? Now this is found and the government are not saying anything. Time has come for us to take our destinies in our hand. I weep for this nation. People are fighting to rule without having any clear solution. They and their cronies want to share money. I think time has come for us to stand and talk the truth. You are doing great. Thank you so much. And that's from BC. Thank you, BC. Do you know that? Okay. When the people in government steal, they believe they are enriching themselves. But they are daft to realize that there will be a ripple effect on their kids and great-grandkids. Do, do, do we believe in that. that thing in this country? <laughs> say, come and go happen, say, whatever, whatever goes around. Because you know they ever happen. No, no, no. no, but when you even talk about karma, it's, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be them. We are reaping it. Mm. All of us, this conversation we're having now, you're reaping how many, what, years and years of poor decision making, <sighs> poor, um, poor accountability, poor policies. We're all reaping it now. 
you know the sad thing about life is that not every time would bad things happen to bad people so we say these people are doing these things or oh, what will happen to their kids or i mean are we not seeing it are their kids even in this country the kids are doing well uh-huh. so what are we saying now <laughs> we should point it about ourselves not not what will affect their children and their grandchildren. So in one quick word or one sentence, what, what, what would the solution be? Do we believe that a PVC can actually change this kind of stealing? Do we believe so? Maybe if we have a favorable... Yeah, if we, maybe if we vote wisely and we have a favorable president. Just maybe, just maybe, that would be a lasting solution. Mary, do you believe that? Um... I don't think I believe it, but it's a step it's a start. towards, yeah, it's a start towards, you know, change. Um, I'm happy about how we, the youths, you know, are standing up, at least. It's never been seen, you know, at least even in our parents' generation. So we're getting there. It's not an immediate change, but it's something, you know, for you to be able to stand up you know, and say no to something. It's it will come. Okay. I believe it will come. It's a start. Let me skip with you. Because I'm not going to <laughs> Thank you, Chinelo. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Uti. Ah, I've had a fantastic day, but I'm upset. Uh, you have transferred your anger to me. <laughs> now, before we go, I'm sure you follow us on Instagram. <laughs> That way, show Africa, you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society, over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that author um, authorizes it and a moral code that justifies it. I think we're justifying theft, we're justifying corruption, we're justifying everything wrong right now in this country. And we truly, truly need something very different. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.